Good morning, my YouTube people. Today is Wednesday, good old Wednesday morning. Uh, not, not as nice again as it was Tuesday, but it's still a nice day outside. 11 degrees, no rain, no snow. I'm a happy guy again. So today, uh, we're gonna continue on with the Delica. Uh, when Craig gets here, he's planning on uh, bringing a pretty cool car, uh, a JDM Austin Mini, believe it or not. And uh, behind us here, well behind you, behind in front of me, we've got a uh, 2000 and I believe 14 uh, Mitsubishi Lancer. This is what we call the buddy install. The, uh, the good old buddy install when your friend comes to your house and he does his, his install techniques on your house and he uh, does not do a very good job. And uh, he does not do a very good job for a very particular reason. And that particular reason is because he does not know what the fuck he is doing. So, that being said, let's check this thing out. So in the back here, we've got a couple little JBL 10 inch woofers, decent equipment, not too bad. Decent equipment, he's got, I believe, a, a Pioneer 800 watt amplifier, a little under gauge. It looks like he's got a line output converter down there doing something. Single wire single wire so he's only got two one channel going to that buddy install we haven't checked out the rest of that and then we've got a uh, factory head unit in there but under the hood is what uh, is what uh, just just uh, let me grab a light here real quick <laughs> this is my first time seeing it too Damien's like uh, you might want to take a video of this uh, you know so what we got here is four gauge wire oh my goodness gracious four gauge wire taped to a small I believe that's probably 12 gauge wire onto a fuse 10 on, amp fuse 10 amp fuse here's the remote wire here's the remote wire that turns the amplifier on and off and it looks like he's got he's drilled a hole way down in there too so this is what you don't want to do during an installation uh, if you don't know what you're doing the key is to find someone that does I had a video a little while back that uh, that shows, you know, or I kind of talk about why it's important to pay someone that knows what they're doing. Because even though you may get a friend to install your audio system, and it may sound like a good deal, and your buddy's like, yeah, man, I can totally do that. I'm totally awesome. I'm the best installer you've ever seen in your life. Key is, is clearly your friend isn't. And uh, we see this all the time where Someone will bring their vehicle in after getting it installed from their buddy and uh, we end up fixing it for them and they end up having to pay twice, which uh, we would like to avoid for our customers to have to do. So as you can see, Damien's behind me working away on that and uh, obviously we're gonna correct everything that's going on behind the hedge unit and behind, you know, uh, you know underneath of the hood and that kind of thing. But uh, this is the kind of stuff you wanna avoid doing more than once and I mean given that the car is so new who wants to spend money good after bad you know you do it once you do it right the longevity of your equipment is gonna last uh, you know out of curiosity Damien yeah. what did this customer say to you well, it was a buddy install and uh, he knows what he was doing and uh, yeah it wasn't, uh, wasn't good at all <laughs> so was it working no, no. no it wasn't working so I don't know what the heck this guy was thinking, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, he's learned a valuable lesson and uh, that's what we're here for. We're gonna teach this guy how to do it properly. We're not gonna teach him how to do it, but we're gonna show him how it's done properly and he's gonna pay us for it and uh, he'll be a happy customer after. I can assure you of that. Uh, I mean, if the power connections are bad, then I'm assuming everything else that's going on underneath of here is probably equally as bad. So uh, we're waiting for Craig to get here. And when he does, we are gonna continue work on this Mitsubishi Delica over here. This is gonna be part number three. We are definitely finishing, finishing this up today. Uh, it's gotta get done. He's in the process of taking down the headliner up front so he can get at all of the parts out back. And when he does that, I will uh, finish up the speakers in the back there. I know we've talked about that a bunch of times, but he's, uh, he's getting close. He's getting close here, guys. And uh, I'll show you a clip later that I, uh, that I made of Jared's car. Jared's my employee, one of them. And uh, he's a great guy. He's a great little great kid. And 
He uh, really loves car audio and he wanted to show me his audio system, so there'll be a little clip at the end of this video for that. And uh, we'll catch back in with you as soon as Craig gets here, because he's got a pretty awesome ride. All right, so Damien called me over to check something out. What do you want to show me, buddy? All right, so the line converter is hooked up with two wires. Oh, goodness. Following this back, uh -huh. I'm going to follow this along here. Uh -huh. Look where it ends up. Not even a nice little connection. In there. Oh, my God. Just ran it through the door, eh? Right through the door. Oh, my goodness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take out this hedge unit. We're going to take his line output converter. We're going to properly install it behind his hedge unit where it's supposed to go. Or in cases where the speakers are on the rear deck lid there, you can sometimes stick them up there like you guys have seen us do before. But in this case, we're actually gonna put it behind the hedge unit, correct all the wiring that's here, run a set of RCAs along with the remote wire from behind the stereo to the amplifier, and probably have to redo his ground as well because I couldn't even imagine how that's installed today. But uh, we'll get back with Damien this as soon as we uh, get some progress made on this thing. So Damien's making some progress here. He's got the, uh, look at that, speaker popper in there to make sure he's got the right speakers. And he's gonna be hooking up the line open converter. He's got his RCA's ran there, his power cable ran properly. And that's all kind of slinging into the back here. But I got the camera out because Craig has brought his JDM Mini. His JDM Mini is so nice. That's like an Indian slash Japanese accent I had going on there, guys. So this is a BDM, British Domestic Motor JDM, which was imported to Japan and then brought back to Canada. Pretty sick. And it's right-hand drive. These guys here are discussing how to right-hand drive to left-hand drive. A little bit involved, guys. So there's got to be a brake booster, which got to get moved from there over there along with the steering column which has got to get moved from there to there and it's a little bit involved uh, a little bit involved but it can be done somebody was asking about this yesterday and uh, yes you can convert a right-hand drive car to a left-hand drive car but uh, it's a little bit involved Danny there uh, owned that red mini from a few videos back about a year ago where I uh, got the thing running and so on and so forth so he's like the mini expert and uh, we're just simply asking him, how is this is all done? Uh, it's a little bit of an involved process. I guess it's a one or two day project and uh, you may end up having to delete to the uh, air conditioning. I mean, this engine bay is so crammed, guys. Check this thing out. Unbelievable how crammed this thing is. ECUs right in the engine bay as well. I mean, there isn't much room to stick much of anything, you know? Like, just no room at all. Yeah, so, anyhow, that coffee cup is about the revenants of my freaking hand, I suppose you could say. So, uh, process, do you have to remove the air conditioning? Yes. And you have to delete that? Not necessarily. This, this it can AC be done. Unit, like, these are hard lines directly to the AC unit. Yeah. That we would have to swap that and redo the lines. Yeah. But it could stay. It'd be a big pain in the butt if it stays. Yeah. I'll ask if we can remove it. Yeah. Unbelievably cool, guys. So anyways, Craig brought this thing so we could check it out and uh, go over it with Danny, the uh, mini expert here. And uh, I'll get a uh, screenshot thumbnail of this thing too. All right, guys, so this is all done up. You guys just heard the sound clip, sounds good. Looks good, the way things are supposed to be done, boys. Proper fuse and looming wires and yeah. Looks good. Good job, buddy. Yeah. So good. What you doing, Craig? Fuck around with this thing? Just, just screwing around. Oh, brother. Well, what this, a... this is the broken regulator. This is the broken regulator here. This the, one here. The parts regulator is now in the headliner. Oh goodness. It's been a lot of work guys just to get this freaking uh I said freaking uh <laughs> just to get this uh regulator in and out of this thing for this freaking curtain. Unbelievable amounts of work.
just crazy. So he's gonna get this working and then I am going to um, get those speakers going for the 80th freaking time I said that now. The holy, like the amount of work that he's had to do to get this out of here seems hardly worth it to me, but uh, customer requests it and uh, hopefully he can charge out his labor for that. And pay me. Anyhow, we got this 2000 and I think 12 Dodge Ram 1500 series truck. Customer came in with a complaint of the uh, radio not working. The radio itself is working, but the radio reception is not working. Uh, his Bluetooth audio microphone is also not working. And he'd like to add a backup camera to the tailgate handle, which we will be doing here. So I can show you guys that. And we'll be replacing the front door speakers in this thing. So when I get a little further along here, I'll get back at you. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's up. What you doing? Bad boy camera. Uh huh. This one over here. Going to make these attach to these like this. Very nice. I'm going to take these off. Make a flush mount. Flushy flash. He's going to flush mount the camera inside of the tailgate handle. Very good job, Damian. Yeah. It's going to look very nice. Yeah. It's going to look very nice. It's going to be so good. In there like that. Yeah. Nice little camera there. Yeah. Check this thing out. Fuck yeah. Look at that. It's got night vision and all sorts of different things. Now you just gotta figure out which direction it goes in. Yeah, we can figure that out. I mean, that's so weird. That must be the top of the camera there then. Or that little night vision thing is. I mean, the camera's not even centered inside of the thing. Like, so that must be, I don't know how that's gonna work. Anyhow. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it, we'll figure it out. I am going to start taking apart these doors so I can get speakers in there. Six by nines. Not a whole lot of depth to these though. So I'm going to start taking apart this door and getting speakers in there. Yep. Eating some Harveys. I'm starving and I'm fat. So, you know. Can't have a fat guy without Harveys, guys. Oh, Billy. <laughs> you did such a good job, dude. Uh oh, 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 Billy, oh, Billy. <laughs> dingy, dingy, dingy. Check dingy. this thing out. Get your fucking mitts out of the way, bud. Well, I like it. Bro. Oh, there we go. Yeah, we did. Yeah. That's a nice, uh, nice installation you did there, buddy. Thanks. Okay, I really gotta get to work and get these fucking doors apart. See you guys later. See you in a bit. All right, guys. So I got the door panel off. Factory speaker here. We're just gonna take a nut driver and take this thing off. And uh, I believe this side is working, but it's the other side that's not. And of course, you wanna re replace speakers in pairs uh, because they are sold in pairs, first off. And uh, second off, why wouldn't ya, I suppose? And uh, that way, you know, you, you get uh, proper sound, you know, left and right, replacing speakers. He's got an aftermarket head unit, so I'm assuming that's why this one or that one died there. He purchased his vehicle secondhand. So I'm gonna assume that's why uh, you know the speakers are blown. You know, Brittany, the previous owner, was really, really banging on it and just uh, you know blew up the speaker. Who knows, right? So we're uh, three screws deep into this thing here. We're gonna pull this sucker off and uh, we're gonna see what fits. So we're gonna stick these bad boys in there. These Hertz DC six by nines. Really nice set of speakers. Low mounted magnet, so we can get it in behind here. They don't really give you. A a whole lot of mounting depth as you can see this uh, window regulator is actually mounted to the factory speaker bracket and this factory speaker bracket is actually part of the whole entire door assembly so it's either going to be a matter of uh, using six by nine spacers in here in order to get that to work or using a set of speakers that'll work properly so we're going to give these babies a whirl okay so because of the way that we chose our speakers We've actually removed this orange cap off the back, which is it, it's a real no benefit to the speaker other than to uh, make it look a bit better. But uh, it does fit perfectly in behind. So there's a little factory speaker spacer there. Got our connectors here, and we'll get the speaker in the hole. What you doing? Me? Yeah. yeah. I'm under here. Hanging out. Having a good time? Yeah, just stuck. Just stuck as fuck. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people could just suck on his knob if he's fucking out of here. <laughs>
Anyhow, speakers in the hall. The whole objective is to become unevasive as possible. Factory bolts, factory location, no hacking, no cutting. A very nice installation, a very nice. This door is gonna go back together. You get the idea. That side's gonna be exactly the same. And then I'll pull apart the head unit and show you a cool little issue that a lot of installers don't think about. All right, so just because I'm cool and awesome, I'll show you how to remove a door panel off a 2012 Dodge Ram. There's a bunch of these little clippy things that look like screws, but they're actually just clips. And uh, I don't know why they do that, maybe for looks, but uh, you just take a little pick tool like that, and you pull it like that, and it will pop out in one piece there. And then you take your pick tool again, and it will pop out again there. Just set that to the side. There's a screw behind the, the door handle here. You gotta use a pick tool to pull off this little trap door. And then there's this piece right here, which will come off there. And then there's all these little clips that go all the way along the outer perimeter of the door. Remove those, and then the panel will literally just lift straight up. And then you gotta disconnect your wires off of your, uh, your window and uh, lock controls there. So we got the head unit pulled out of this thing, and uh, due to popular belief, no one likes to use modules and things like that to make things work properly, so they just hack it into place. But we now need to find uh, reverse for our backup camera. But not only that, the customer was complaining, hey, you know, I can hear them through my Bluetooth, but they can't hear me. And not only that, but none, like, literally there were no screws holding this whole entire thing together. Uh, but uh, there is no Bluetooth mic hooked up to the back of this thing. We were looking for it all over the place. Like we usually put it up here on the headliner and uh, we couldn't find it. So we took apart the head unit obviously and uh, there isn't a Bluetooth mic. And uh, his radio wasn't working because this wasn't connected. So simple fixes I suppose. Uh, but we're just gonna get this thing wired up and put it back together and then uh, show you. But before I do that, I will show you the backup camera fully installed. Look at that, guys. Factory, factory, at Jabe. Very nice. So Craig is confident in his abilities. He's now swapping parts over from one to the other. And this is actually the third regulator we've tried. Well, it's the third regulator now we've tried. So what we're gonna do is get this all swapped out and we're gonna throw it in there. And when it works, I will show you. Otherwise, we're gonna set this fucking thing on fire. Sorry, got to. It's, a, it's that time of the day now where we've worked on it enough. I'm done, so is Craig. And uh, yeah, so I'll show you if it works. If it doesn't, I don't know what to do then, Craig. What do you think? Uh, Burn it? We'll sell it broken. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess. No, we won't. We won't. No. We won't sell it broken. We're gonna make sure it works, guys. We've got it all apart at this point. There's no point. It's already been back together. Ah, it's already been back together. The curtain just wasn't closing properly, but now it's going to, and when it does, I will show you. All right, guys, so excellent news. Things are working perfectly just the way they're supposed to be. The battery kind of went a little bit dead on this thing because the doors were open, but we got the whole thing installed here. It's awesome, it's working, and uh, man, that took forever, but it works, and uh, you know, that's the quality of the workmanship that Craig likes to do on his vehicles, you know? You buy one from him, and he wants to make sure it works perfectly. You know, he takes it all apart strategically and makes sure it's all, you know, perfect for you. So now we're just going to reassemble this thing and uh, I'll get the speakers in probably tomorrow and uh, we'll go from there. So good news, guys. All right. So moving along here, we got uh, this Dodge Ram. We have convinced the customer to go with a proper data retention module, which Damien is wiring up right now. So that way it provides us with our steering, not our steering controls, but our reverse trigger. And... Uh, we're installing, or I'm installing, the Bluetooth microphone, which is up in the headliner here, right uh, right there, very nicely. Got the GPS antenna mounted behind the dash. Next, after that, we're gonna extend our backup camera wiring up into behind the dash there as well. And uh, we'll get it all working, and we'll give you a, a little brief demo. And uh, I think that'll probably end up being it for the day, guys, but I'll uh, show you after. And uh, I will clip in now uh, the uh, installation of Jared's vehicle. All right, guys, so I wanted to uh, show you Jared's vehicle here. It's a 2010 Toyota Corolla. He's done all the work himself. He's a young buck. He's uh, only part-time here at Carphonics, but the kid uh, thoroughly enjoys car audio. 
and I wanted to show you the work that he's done. He did all this stuff himself. He uh, did the installation in the back here. It's got uh, Rockford Fosgate woofers, Rockford Fosgate amplifier on the right hand side here to uh, power up those woofers. He's got a, a Kicker CX 300.4 powering all the doors and uh, the mids and tweets. Made all this stuff himself from scratch. I mean, pretty impressive. All this down here is all hand cut, wrapped. Really nice beauty panel down there. It's got a capacitor up there showing his voltage. Real nice job, Jared. Looks good. Then back here, he's got uh, just a couple of sets of six and a halfs. And up front here, he's got a Pioneer flip out with uh, a Clarion, a Clarion uh, EQ sitting pretty in the dash there. You know, a lot of my Jamaican friends really like those EQs for some reason. Does Jared look Jamaican to you? No. <laughs> Jamaican me laugh, Brajan. You're making me laugh. <laughs> yes, sir. So he's got a set of kicker uh, components in the doors here. Just a set of tweeters there. Uh, the uh, mid is in the door there. And then he's got a kicker six by nines in the back, right? Yeah. yeah. The uh, what's out on the, the on the back? back uh, yeah. Yeah. So he's got uh, just a quick little demo for us. We're going to do about five seconds, guys. It's all we got. So here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, that's all we can do, Jared. That's it, that's it, buddy. That's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh Jesus. Just, yeah. No, copyright infringement, boys. Oh, fuck, I got to figure something out about that. Give all the people I know copyright-free music if I could. But uh, anyhow, I just wanted to show you that. That is Jared's 2010 Toyota Corolla. Super awesome job. You did a good job. Thanks for showing me, Jared. Appreciate it, buddy. Thanks for showing me, Jared. Appreciate it. All right, guys. So we got the uh, engine it all installed here. Got the module properly working in behind there. It also provides us with a reverse trigger uh, through CAN bus. Everything's nicely organized back there beautifully. We got to find some screws because when we took this apart, it didn't have any in it. But to uh, give you an idea, there's the backup camera and the tailgate handle. And it's not straight right now, but we're going to make it straight, so don't you worry about that. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So today, that's that's today's video, man. Uh, today's done, and uh, we're going to call this video done. Uh, great success today. Kept ourselves pretty busy. So um, that's it. Make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you press the bell thing on this side. I guess it's on this side, not that side. It's on this side here. And uh, thanks for watching. Until tomorrow, have a great day, guys.